Good morning. I'm so excited to share this style of video with you on my channel. Uh, a lot of the time I'll be shooting videos when I'm off on adventures, on safari or around Cape Town. But I also really want to share with you more of a tutorial style video where I bring you into the amazing world of safari that just means everything to me and try and help you get the most out of it. If one day you are able to come on safari, whether you've been before or whether you haven't, doesn't matter. I really want to get you deeper into this world, help you understand it and really appreciate it for the insanely awesome world that it is. So today in this video, I'm going to try and help you to plan the absolute perfect safari. Okay, so how do we plan the perfect safari? I mean, first of all, you've done the most awesome thing by deciding to go on safari. Um, as I said before, whether it's your first safari or if it's your hundredth safari, I'm hopeful that you'll be able to learn something from this. So first things first, how do we kind of look at planning the first safari? Well, you can break it down pretty simply into the who, what, where, when and why. Um, and that's how I'll break down this video with a bit of a how at the end, so stick around for that. Who? So the first thing is who? Pretty straightforward one. Who are you going to travel with? Is it you by yourself um, or are you with a big group of friends or family? It really doesn't matter. We've had travelers from young chaps on their gap years heading off on adventures um, through Africa. And there are also amazing vast groups of friends celebrating birthdays or multi-generational families all different shapes and sizes of groups, families, whatever can come on safari. It really doesn't matter and there's something that is right for you all. But it is important to think about who to begin with because who is often where the most limitations comes in. So for example, if you're traveling with young kids, um, you just gotta be aware that certain safari camps are, let's say, less welcoming to young children than others and you might want to maybe avoid a malaria area if you've got a baby who's with you but equally you might be terrified of flying in small planes i absolutely adore flying in those small planes because you get to see the bush from a completely different angle and perspective and it's it's so much fun and the excitement levels when you spot your first elephant from a plane yeah no it's, it's mega so think about the who first that is really the starting point and from there we can explore the rest so the second point is what? Now, with the rest of these sections, there are gonna be many different ways to, to look at, at them. So to begin with what? So what type of experience are you keen to experience? Um, what I mean by that is, do you want to head out on a boating safari? Do you wanna be on a game drive? Now a game drive is the most typical form of safari experience where you, um, depending if you're doing a self-drive or not, but let's talk about a, a game drive in a camp or a lodge for the time being. You'll have a guide um, who will be with you throughout your stay in that area. And there'll be you on an open Land Rover or Toyota Land Cruiser. And you'll head out on safaris in the morning and the afternoons um, to find wildlife. That's, that's the main way that one can experience safari. But there are other ways. So there's boating safaris. So in Botswana or in Zambia, you can head out on flat bottom boats or on Makoros, which are dugout canoes, which you find in the Okavango Delta of Botswana. Maybe you want to be sipping a coffee as you float silently um, over open plains, and that would mean that heading to the Masai Mara of Kenya or the Serengeti of Tanzania would be the perfect place. So I often find that if you close your eyes and think about how you're visualizing the safari, how are you doing it? Are you walking, for example? However, that's a really important place to start out because that will dictate a lot of the following um, factors that decide how to plan the perfect safari. But also of incredible importance is what type of wildlife are you keen to see? Now, if you're dead set on finding a rhino, there are gonna be a particular areas that are really important to go to. A lot of people finding a rhino's is a, is a big thing because if you've been on safari a number of times you'll know that they're quite heavily poached i mean devastatingly heavily poached um, and you don't often see them so you can specify which area you want to go to in particular to find rhino 
but you might be keen to find lions or a particularly amazing set of giraffe or what who knows if there's a particular type of animal you want to see then it's really important to bear that in mind my top tip though for when you're on safari is to let the guide know what you are really passionate about trying to find and what you're really keen to see but then kind of let it go um i've too often had people that come and they're absolutely and understandably desperate to see a leopard um but in a way they let that cloud their enjoyment of the rest of the experience um, because they focus too much on one one animal and yeah you miss out on the incredible bird life the trees the scenery so definitely let it known what you're keen to find and obviously in the planning process it's important to work out where the best chance is going to be where the best area for the best chance is going to be of finding that but once you're there relax and let the rest of the trip um, unfold in front of you and let nature take its course then we're still within the what's the style of safari that you want to do so what style of safari do you want to embark on um, do you want to be in rustic kind of old-fashioned back to basics tents which move every day exploring and following the great migratory herds or do you want to be in a kind of midway between that and a luxury style of accommodation or do you want to go full hog amazing luxury five star every step of the way Dom Perignon on tap everything is possible um, and depending on your comfort zones one might be better suited to you than the other my advice would be um, to try and experience as many different styles as possible um, it's obviously makes sense that if you are going to do different styles to go from the most basic to the most luxurious it just flows better um, but yeah have a have a think about what style of accommodation you would feel most comfortable with so if you're slightly nervous and you're going on your first safari you might want to consider that's maybe slightly more luxurious or well-built style of safari camp or lodge as opposed to a mobile camp or a fly camp which is really pretty pretty basic just to help you really relax into it and get the most out of the safari experience and then the final point in the what is are you considering or are you keen to experience anything else whilst you're on this amazing trip i mean first of all getting to africa is a pretty spectacular thing but it has more to offer than just the safari so if you want to for example see the battlefields of, of zululand where the anglos and boers fought it out or if you want to go and relax on the beach at the end of a strenuous safari you might want to do that on the shoreline of zanzibar or something uh, spectacular like that it's important to to have that in consideration because that will also logistics wise help to work out where the best area to go is so that brings us nicely on to where where to go on safari now you might already have somewhere in mind and that's amazing and uh, maybe you're dead set on going to south africa because it's got everything in mind you've been always keen to go there or maybe you've always heard that botswana is amazing if you've got somewhere in mind already that's brilliant but if you don't then great way to start to work out where to go is to think back on the experiences that we talked about in the previous section um, so for example if you really want to be in a canoe going silently past a pod of hippos as they snort at you which can be quite scary initially but is such an epic experience then Zambia or Zimbabwe is the place to go as you go along towards the lower Zambezi or Mana pools on the banks of the Zambezi river it's the best place for canoeing past pods of hippos um, so if that's something you're really keen on then that might be the best place to go and um, so think about the types of experiences because that will help understand where the best place to go is um, equally if you close your eyes like we did before and imagine the type of experience maybe there's a landscape that really just comes to mind and you think wow that's just incredible and that might be if you're sipping that coffee in the hot air balloon drifting silently it might be vast open plains dotted with small trees and herds of animals going around and then that's going to be the Serengeti again and the Masai Mara which are are the places for you but you might alternatively in your mind be imagining 
flowing rivers, dense bushland, rocky outcrops, and that's gonna open up a whole different area or a desert environment. So close your eyes again, imagine the type of uh, safari you see in your mind, and that will help as well. So those are the first two really important points to consider when planning the perfect safari. Third, when, okay, this is really important, and this one's probably split into three different categories. The first being, if you're after a particular, if you're really keen on seeing a particular event or spectacle, so the famous wildebeest and zebra migration, as mentioned, or if you're really keen on seeing the Okavango Delta as it's um, being, being filled with the floodwaters that arrive from Angola, which happens around July, August. Um, if there's a particular event in mind, then that's fantastic and, and that's when you should go. But it's important to know uh, when those are, obviously, to make sure that you're not disappointed. Um, although you can never be disappointed on safari if you go with the right mindset. But if you don't have a particular spectacle in mind and you're not constrained to any timings, because that is the another point, you might be constrained to say school holidays or you're on gardening leave or it's a sabbatical or there's a birthday. Um, if there's none of that, then you have to think about the seasons. So the seasons of Africa vary quite, quite significantly between East Africa and Southern Africa. With East Africa, so Tanzania and Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, um, they experience two dry seasons and two rainy seasons. The long rains are from kind of March through to June. Then there's a lovely dry season from June through to November. Then they experience the short rains in November, early December. Um, and then again, another dry season from mid-December through to March. In Southern Africa, um, a little bit different. Uh, in Southern Africa, the rains, for the most part, follow the, the summer. So from December, mid-December usually, often the rains that have arrived slightly late, December through to Late March are uh, one rainy season, um, the summer, and then through the winter, it tends to be a little bit drier. So from April, May through again to November, December, tends to be quite dry. Maybe with November, the, the storm clouds building up. Now, have a think about if there's one in particular, one type of season that's more preferential to you. In all honesty, going on safari, is epic any month of the year. In fact, I find it sometimes quite frustrating that we talk about it as the rainy season versus the non-rainy season because actually going on safari in Botswana in January is incredible. Um, the Yes, there might be a chance of rain, but the bush is full of life with lots of young impala, young wildebeest around, the predator of prey interactions amazing, the colours of the bush are phenomenal, the migratory birds are in place. So, so don't think that going on safari in the rainy season is a bad thing. Also has an added bonus of often being a lot cheaper to go on safari then. So that's a, that's a big and important factor um, for a lot of people. So be open-minded. Um, if you are keen to go and not risk one drop of rain, maybe just go to the desert. But no, there, there are times as well which we can help to work that out. So that's the who, what, where, the when. And now the why. Now the why should be pretty obvious. Safari, as I've said, and as you can probably tell, is the most amazing thing in the world and something that everyone, if they at all can, should experience in their life. Doesn't matter if it's on a budget or if you've got an unlimited budget, if you can try and get on safari once in your life, at least once in your life, it will be life-changing. And I 100% mean that it has changed my life for the better in in such an immeasurable way. Um, so congrats, you're going on a safari, well done. But it is also important to think about if it's a special occasion, is it your honeymoon or is it um, a big birthday celebration, an anniversary, your sabbatical, something you've worked up to for a long time? Um, or are you maybe mourning the loss of some someone that you've loved dearly? Going to the bush is an amazingly special time to reconnect with yourself, with nature, uh, but also to celebrate. So knowing what the occasion is for, that's really important. And, and that actually leads me on to the how. 
Uh, now, this video isn't officially sponsored by anyone, but technically I suppose it's sponsored by my safari company, Bonomi Travel, um, because I, I should probably be working um, for that right now, but, but this is, is work too. So how? How is the best way to make sure you plan that perfect safari? Now, I would probably say this regardless of whether I own a safari company or not, but you should definitely contact uh, an expert who can help you really navigate this world of making sure you take everything into consideration. There are lots of amazing safari companies out there. Bonomi Travel, which is linked below, naturally I think is the best, but it is important to get to chat to someone who is an expert who's been to all these places because they'll be able to answer any questions you have, but they'll also be able to just show you something which you maybe weren't thinking about, which actually is right for you. So. The final tip is chat to a safari expert. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this video, that, that you like the style of uh, a more tutorial style video. Um, if you've got any questions that you might want answering in a subsequent video, please let me know in the comments below. If you haven't already, please do like this video and subscribe to the channel, it, it really helps. Um, I mean, I know I've only got about 24 precisely subscribers right now at the time of filming but that'll grow and hopefully that means that we can bring more content to you which will show you this awesome world guys thank you so so much see you in the next video bye